In this video, we're going to show you how to do an alternative maintenance check-in procedure on a GE-4000 patient monitor utilizing the Fluke Biomedical ProSim 8 and the Fluke Biomedical ESA 615. Both of these devices are connected to one QA at one time, and I'll be able to run through the entire checkout procedure of the Dash 4000. Please note, this is not a standard PM procedure taken out of the manual. This is something we just built and made up just to show you some of the highlights of the Fluke Biomedical system. All right, let's get into it here. So here we are in the one QA, and you'll see our asset list, and we'll go down to our patient monitor and click on it. And here you can see the picture of the Dash 4000. So we know we have the correct monitor. You also notice we have all the information, the asset tag ID, its location, the device type, manufacturer, model, uh, the last time it was serviced, the next time it's due, as well as some special notes that I entered into here so I know exactly what I need to do to be able to perform this PM. I need a Prosumate and an ESA, which we have both on the desk. So let's go down and start the procedure. We'll click Run. And here we are. We have the date, starting time, and the tester. This is myself, and this is password protected, so this is like my electronic signature. This is the first place we're going to interact with our CMMS, where we have, um, we can either, this will automatically fill from the CMS, or we can enter it in. So we'll just enter in test 456. That's just made up number for today. We can see that we're doing a preventive maintenance type, and here's the asset information, the asset tag, the model, manufacturer, serial number. The next thing that's really nice is these are the two Fluke devices that are attached to the OneQA software, an ESA 615 safety analyzer, here's the serial number, and here's the date the cal of the calibration. A ProSim 8, the serial number, and the date of its calibration. Now I know that both units are within a year of calibration and I'm good to go with my PM. If I ever have an issue, I can go back and find out exactly which mod, uh, which work orders these two devices were used on through the system. Moving down, let's start the visual inspection. So we can go through and follow the simple instructions and read them and select the appropriate answer. And you can notice that we don't just have to have pass and fail. We took things that like says, if it fails, list below, uh, list the failure below. Well, let's mark these all as pass. Oh, maybe this one is a fail. Let's see what happens. So if we fail something, we get a red X. So we either annotate this or correct a failure, in which we, case we can mark pass then. And we'll write down here in the box, no issues found. All right, moving on to the next step. We're going to do a non-invasive blood pressure calibration. We'll need all these devices. We're going to need a mandrel for our fluke, prosumate, the connector or adapter hose, the blood pressure cuff, the patient hose, and the ProSim 8. So we'll, I have all those on the desk. They're already connected. Uh, here's some special instructions we pulled out of the manual. And now here's the cert, how to enter the service mode. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll follow the instructions here. We'll go to main menu and monitor setup, service mode, enter the code. And we are into service mode. All right, next step. We're going to need to set up our non-invasive blood pressure. Here's a picture exactly how to set up. So here's my hose to my adapter and to my patient circuit with the cuff wrapped around the mandrel. That's already set up and done. And here's the instructions. We'd read through the instructions. We're going to go over here to calibrate and NIBP and CalCheck. All right. Hold up there for a second. Here's a diagram showing us exactly the keystrokes. We pulled this out of the manual and embedded it, so we have no question about what we need to do. We're actually going to do two tests once. We're going to do the non-invasive blood pressure leak test as well as the NIBP actually test. So let's go ahead and we're going to zero our pressure meter, which is built into the ProSim 8. All right, it beeped. That's done. Now we're going to go ahead and hit start right here run test point and we're going to start on our monitor now the monitor is going to go ahead and pump up and we'll see the pressure build right here in 1QA remember you never want to calibrate a monitor using a dynamic pre blood pressure you want to use it as a static solid pressure 
So that's what we're doing here. This one QA and ProSumate is also capable of doing leak checks, uh, the pop-off valve check, as well as has a built-in pressure source. But the GE monitor doesn't need those things. It just needs to buy the manual just to do the cow check like this. So we pumped up to 250, and it's going to bleed down to 240. When it says 240 here, we're going to go ahead and push the stop button here. And if, if the pressure is within tolerance, which is plus or minus one millimeter mercury, we'll get a pass. If it's without that, we'll get a fail. So we're at 241. Wait till this goes to 240. It's bleeding down a little bit more to bleed down here. There's at 240. So I'll push the button here. And my pressure was within one millimeter mercury. So 240 here, 239.8, spot on. Now the next thing he wants us to do is wait after we reach to 240 and see if we're losing more than one millimeter mercury in five seconds. That pressure is holding pretty flat. So I'm going to say yes. We're losing less than one millimeter mercury in five seconds. Oh, which is a pass, which means this test is done and this test is done. So we have our green lights on the right. So now let's move down to the next step. The next step is we're going to do the vital signs and alarm testing. Here's our instructions. We're going to test the high and low limit alarms. And I put a special instruction in here because yesterday when I was setting up, I grabbed the wrong temperature cable and it had the two black rings. I need the one with one black ring. So I have the verbiage and I have a picture right here showing me to use this temperature probe adapter. And then I scroll down and here's exactly how I need to set this up. Here's my temp my SPO2 to the finger probe. Here's that temperature cable I just showed you connected into the adapter, into the monitor, my ECG. Uh, my non-invasive blood pressure that we left in from the prior step. So that's good to go. Now watch this. I go down to the next step here, and we're going to test all the high alarm limits with the accession of SPO2 because we can't have too high SPO2. So I just have a trip for a low alarm. So here we go. We'll click in here. You'll notice once I hit start on 1QA, if you look at the ProSum 8, it now says it's in remote mode. So it is taking care of all the functions of the patient monitor at one time. I didn't have to do anything there. So we're good to go there. Let's go ahead and hit non-invasive blood pressure. And it's going to start doing that. So my heart rate's 160. So I'll put it in here. 160. All right. My ECG amplitude is displayed as 1 millivolt right there good my waveform looks pretty good so we'll mark yes my respiration rate is supposed to be 40 we're reading at 39 40 it's right on the line so we'll put 40 in there the temperature is supposed to be 37.5 we're reading 37.6 spo2 we have set at 90 we are reading 89 all right, now our blood pressures. This is just to verify that we can take a diastolic blood pressure. Uh, since we're over pressure, it's going to take a little bit for it to catch it the first time. And you could hear it ran through once. It's running it through the second time. And there we have a capture of 275 over 190. So we'll put that into here. Systolic, 275. Diastolic, 190. And our map or our mean is 227. And we are shooting for a 255 over 195 with 215. So we're pretty close. Um, it's the first time up, but we're not going for accuracy here. We're just making sure all these alarms are in fact sounding. So you can see by our rates, we're over all of them. Okay, so that's good. Now let's go to the next step, which is a normal vital signs rhythm. I click there, and you'll see instantaneously all of the parameters are dropping back within line now non-invasive blood pressure is still out so let's run our non-invasive blood pressure again all right so all of our alarms are shut off our heart rate we have set at 60 and we're displaying 60 which is good because we only had a tolerance of one 
Um, our ECG amplitude is still ranging at one millivolt. The ECG waveform, there's a little bit of interference on there. I think we have a bad lead. So we can replace that for today. We'll call it good. Our respirations, it has a tolerance of 2. So we're reading at 20. It was set at 20. So we'll put that in here and see if we pass. That's a passing score. Our temperature is now at 32. Our SpO2 is reading 96. So we're only off by 1. And now let's look at our blood pressure again as it's still adjusting itself down all right here we go 129 over 82 with a mean of 101 so put that in here 129 over 82 and 101 now if i was afraid this was a little bit too high i could run it again but this is just for demo purposes so we're going to call it good now let's see if we can trip all those low alarms so here we go we're going to click in here and it's going to change all the parameters on the ProSum 8. Notice I didn't touch anything on this ProSum 8. And everything has changed. So I didn't even have to know how to set this up. Everything changed automatically for me. My heart rate's dropping. My respirations are dropping. So we're getting an alarm. My SpO2 is dropping. Here we go. So we have a heart rate of 40. And over here it's reading 40. The amplitude is still reading one millivolt. The ECG waveform still looks pretty good. My respirations are 15. I should alarm here in a little bit here because our, our low is 5. So we're still above what our respiration rate should be. Um, my SpO2 is at 73. Uh, it's the low alarms for 90, so let's go ahead and we'll put my SpO2 in here. 73. My temperature is reading 30. Okay. And my blood pressure. All right, here we go. And our alarm. We're now at 56 over 27 with a mean of 36, which puts us out of tolerance. And alarm went off, so let's go ahead and we'll set this at 56, 27, and 36. All right, we did all those parameters without having to touch the person mate. So now we can roll right into our electrical safety test. So you'll see, so silence that so we can hear better. In our electrical safety test, here's what we're going to do. We're going to fall on FP99, and here is the setup for it. So, let me go ahead and we'll move my ECG leads. Up to my safety analyzer. All right. Now, I'm going to leave this here for a second because I have to zero out my leads. So... There's my setup, so I know exactly how to set up for my test, my ECG leads, and I'm going to take my red alligator clip back to here. But I know from running this a few times, I have to zero up my leads first. So let's go ahead and we'll move down to this electrical safety, and we're going to push run component here. Now it wants me to connect it to my null post, so follow my instructions. We're already connected. We'll zero that out. Now we're going to connect this to that test point that we showed in the prior instructions. All right, and we're going to continue. And again, this might not be the way you do electrical safety. This is just an example. And you see it automatically generated a resistance. Push run on the next one. Continue. Again, I'm not pushing any buttons on electrical safety analyzer. I'm not adjusting anything. I'm simply hitting run and make sure it's powered on. All the results are automatically populated. We have passes there. We're going to move down to the next to the applied parts test. And here's how to set it up. Here's the diagram. And here's a picture. So we'll follow, make sure we have the picture set up. Yep, we're connected over there. And let's go ahead and we'll start this test. 
look at this. All this data is automatically populated. So a lot of people make the argument about why well, we don't want to do electrical safety anymore. It takes too long. I'm not doing anything. The system is recording all these results for me already automatically. So why not? No special notes. And we'll put a PM sticker on it. That's our last green checkbox over here. At the bottom, we have a green light, which means the PM procedure has been completed. We'll click Done. And this is going to go ahead and save it over to our reports. From here, this is our results. We can make different forms of a report. We can do a modified report. We can do the all report, all the data. Here's our test. We just passed it. So we can modify these reports and what data you want to come over to your PC. So you see in this example, it has all the data included into this, but we can also get rid of a lot of these fields that you don't want to bring brought over, like the pictures and stuff, and simply import this back into your CMMS platform or attach it as a PDF. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you in our next video.